one we're gonna do a, um, a I guess it would be a 55 to 59 buyers guide um, I'm here with my buddy Jeff hi there who knows a lot about these trucks uh, would you call yourself a, a bit of an expert Jeff uh, not an expert but I you know, know he's my a, way around he's a bit of an expert he knows he knows all don't play Chevy trivia with this guy you'll lose <laughs> Um, so anyway, I thought I'd bring Jeff here with me today and we'd go through a bit of a buyer's guide because he knows these things much better than I do. This is my first one. And Jeff, if you were looking at buying, you know, a 55 to 59 Chevy or GMC, what would be important to you? Well, I think with these trucks, like any most trucks, the first thing you, I would look at is the cab, the shape of the cab. Oh, okay. Let's go take a look. Maybe you can explain some of the... Some of the things someone should look for. Well, first off, I would be looking at the rockers from a, you know, a visual from the outside, right? Sure, that makes sense. And I wouldn't be too worried about like where the fenders bolt up because a lot of these parts you can buy or repair and bolt back on, right? Okay, yeah, that's true. Um, then we'd look at the corners and see how bad they are, how high they go up, okay. because some of them they'll rust like up here, where this is just down here. So that's a little bit of work, but cab corners themselves aren't expensive, correct? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, most of the patches aren't that great. Like, they might not even go that high, where typically patches are, like, lower, right? Right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. All right. Let's, uh, what's next on your list? So I typically look at the step. The this one covered in this, but... How's this center? step? I think this step is in pretty good shape. Even if you had to fix it or replace it, it's the shape is there, it's there, and you can work with that. Like you can see in this one, it's starting to rust through here, but that's something you can patch pretty pretty easily. Okay. And then what I would look for is this lower hinge pocket. That typically rots because the dirt from the wheel gets in there on the inside of the fender just kind of collects like a sponge and yeah. starts to rust Get, itself out yeah okay that makes sense yeah what else are we looking for since we're in here okay well if you're if you're rolling up to it obviously you want to see if the serial number's there what kind of trim tag it has and okay. just by looking at this truck we figured out the trim tag is with the serial number on this truck right where some trucks the trim tag is separate the gmc's are separate is that right yeah well the gmc i have is separate we're and we're in canada so these are canadian trucks uh it might be a little bit different with the american yeah. trucks i'm i guess we can't really say yeah and if you know sometimes people put different front clips on different fenders different hoods from different years so if you're looking at the serial number all these G all these canadian trucks the first number is the year yeah so this the first number on this one is a six and this is a 1956. okay <clears throat> what next are we looking at well like I said like a look above the windshield because i have seen a many that have been rusted above the windshield yeah and uh and yeah. then the the roof itself because you would see damage in a lot of places if there was full of rust and mouse and mice. And yeah, we got another truck we can look at and kind of show us that. So, um, and the dash is the radio hole cut out. You know, is there going to be extra work in the cab? Like in this, the dash is pretty good. I see a couple holes in the dash that will have to be filled. If Those are need. likely outlaw bullet holes. Yeah. Huh. And, uh, like this one is nice because the, the gauges are intact, the switches are intact, the steering wheel is intact, the steering column, you know, the brake lever, the brake lever. Like a lot of this truck is intact, which is really nice. Yeah, I think it's important. Like the more together it is, the further ahead you are, even if the parts may not all be good, but at least if they're there, yeah. you know what you're missing and what like, you need and what you need to replace like over time if a truck switches hands like 10 times you know each owner does something different or takes something off or loses something so yeah so you can find one fairly original it's kind of nice okay let's keep going so 
Uh, maybe another place I would look is the, the drip rail on the, the drip path. rail. Okay. Because sometimes they'll be rusted or coming off or bent up or you know, and that's just you know more work if you have to fool around with that. And here on this truck, there's a hole. Somebody drilled a hole. I don't know what they had there, but I know from other trucks that farmers used to put signal lights up here. Oh yeah, you're right. So if there's a matching hole on the other side, that's probably what they did. No, and you're right. Some of those trucks, they would pull swathers or big hay bale trailers and stuff like that. So you might want those lights sticking out a little further than, and your little lights on the back of the truck, they wouldn't do you so much good. That makes perfect sense. And then of course, uh, the above the windshield in the front too is a soft spot on these Chevys, but this one's really good. GMC's are same well, thing. Well, it's in the same metal, same body, mm -hmm. so they're going to be the same as you know, mice and rust damage, depending where it, you know if it's sitting in the field or sitting in someone's garage, right? Right. Now the nice thing about these trucks of this vintage um, is that they they do have a lot of replacement parts available. So you can see my floor here. Uh, this is this is the inner rubber floor mat so it'd be good to replace this floor pan uh, with a new one not a big deal uh, i think that's 125 dollars canadian up here um, but you want to take a look at other stuff too like this mount i noticed the rubber is missing out of the mount um, the majority of the floor on this one is in pretty good shape that may not be the case for all of them so be sure to take the time they crawl underneath and have a look. I like to just bring a moving blanket with me because sometimes I'll leave it in a spot where you really don't want to crawl underneath, but you should. Okay, watch out for those guys. That's a, that's a big wasp nest. It probably blew out while I was uh, taking it home on the highway. What do you think about this bed, Jeff? Is this a good one, a bad one, a rough one, well, or repairable? As you can see in this one, it's full of stuff. So typically you'd want to try to dig it out or have a good look on the inside. And you want to see how like straight the box rails are and stuff. Like, I mean, if you're going to build this truck, the cab, the cab is the, the, the biggest focus. Right. And, and the box, you know, you're going to, it's a hit or miss. You're going to have a really good box or you're going to have one that you're going to have to piece together or patch it up but these parts are available yeah. so it's not the end of the world like you, you can see this one had a, originally had a spare tire holder where they have the mounting bolts and the mounting bracket and the the bar typically went through here to the inside and then the cutout and a lot of guys like to restore it like that with the bracket or they take it out and put a patch in okay and then like looking at the fender overall like this is a good fender in my opinion because the top is you know in pretty good shape uh sometimes they're bashed in this is rusted out and bashed in uh there's a couple holes there not sure what those are from maybe a mud flap or something because the taillight bracket is here yep so it looks like the taillights, like the bumper didn't fit the taillights and maybe that's why the holes on the cab, they put the taillights up on the that cab. That could be, yeah. So, How about tailgates? Are they pretty important? Uh, I think getting a tailgate, you're lucky. But again, it's, you know, how rough is it? Is it saveable? Are you doing a patina truck? Are you restoring the truck? Like if you're just going to do a patina job, this is, you know, a perfect tailgate. Like, I would run with it. Sure. Okay. So, uh, it's got the tailgate chain, which usually go missing or broken or taken off. Or, so, so that's good. And of course, the uh, license plate on it's a pretty good indicator of how how long it's been since it was last registered for the road. This one says 1979. You know, it's not to say somebody can't change that, but um you know if your license plate bolts are rusted on like that eh, chances are you know it's, it should be pretty legit yeah yeah it's, which can be a good thing and a bad thing um being off the road a long time comes with its own set of problems as well yeah
And, you know, it depends what the person used it for when they bought it. Like, you know, like the stake holes could be bent out or... Yeah, we see a lot of that. Right, or cracked or, you know, stuff like that. And, like, this, this fender is in really good shape. Like, there's nothing wrong with that fender. Uh, some of the, the trucks, when they're on gravel road, they'll get dinged up. Like, you can actually see where it pops the paint off. So this actually does have a couple little dings in it. So, But yeah, right. that's how they were, right? So they didn't have a, a, a wheel well, like a plastic wheel well to protect it from the rocks. So Sometimes you got to take a sign and put it on the inside to repair them. Yeah, exactly. Like... I've had fenders where someone patched them with the with an old sign, and you don't realize it until you get it home. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Uh, so this fender, same thing as the other side, definitely needs repair in the front. But I w I wouldn't hesitate to do that repair. I would not replace that fender. What about you, Jeff? No, that like the cost of the fender. I would. This is very savable. Like. It, you know, you might have to take split the, the step off and have a look and maybe patch where it bolts together. But if you're restoring it, like this is a very good, a very good fender to start with. I agree. What about the doors on these trucks? Are they, uh, are they typically pretty good? Are they typically pretty bad? Uh, a lot of them rust in the bottom. The I bottom think side. because the weather strip, the water gets inside. Oh, damn, I keep doing that okay so let's take a look here so down along the bottom what's this one look well this one's a little rougher eh? yeah so that one's got some rust along the bottom the driver's one is actually better um, but again i think it's salvageable like, yeah like oh. i think the outer skin and the, the, the door itself is pretty solid like typically you find these taken off or taken apart and you know that messes it up just as bad as you know rust and there we see some of that rust that jeff was talking about on the other side so this this tread piece would not be salvageable we would definitely want to repair or replace that um, but unlike the other side uh, the sides on the inside of this step are in pretty good shape yeah. and with this one the seat we got lucky with the seat is in really good shape and if you wanted to save this seat. Speaking of the seat, does anyone know what that emblem is out of? Does it go with this vehicle? Maybe it does. I'm not too sure. I'm not familiar with it. But uh, while I'm here, Jeff, though, what about that heater? Yeah, that's typically a Canadian heater. Uh, you'll find them in Canadian trucks. It's a big deluxe heater. You might find it in the States as well, but I just know that in the States they have a smaller heater or no heater at all. So okay. so that's good for up here in Canada to have a nice heater, original heater, unless you're going to vintage air or something like that. And this one is actually on GM, GMC's and Chevy's, is that yeah. right? So we haven't talked about the the fenders or the hood or the grill bumpers that kind of stuff yeah so with the fenders like they're typically they're pretty bad and uh some you know you're lucky if you get a good fender but i mean there's patch panels built for these fenders and you're gonna find rust up here where the rocks from the tires again get up inside and do their damage and this has got a lot of damage so they make a patch panel that kind of goes up and around this whole thing which is great i think that's i think it's like a hundred and 150 bucks yeah and then this lower patch is i think 75 bucks or something not bad and then up here yeah this is pretty typical as well and the guy would just kind of build his own i think a building your own patch would yeah. work on this because basically it's just a straight you know straight back you here. you did a repair like this well yeah. i repaired the cab on the inside right because where it mounts uh two when you're taking it apart sometimes this bolt will strip and you'll you'll have to fix the mount but uh up here in we priced out a brand new fender and they want 700 and 795 actually i just priced one out last night 
made it pretty easy call for me. But the, what would you do with this, Jeff? Would you well, throw your money around like a drunken sailor and buy a couple fenders, or would you well, buy the patches? Uh, if you buy the aftermarket fenders, there's not even a chance. It might not even fit. You might have to play with it and cut it and weld it as well. That's a great point. So if you get a fender that's half decent, uh, I would go with patches and repair it that way to save yourself some money and aggravation trying to make it fit. Yeah, I agree. Um, I would put a patch over this. I got, there is a, got a bit of a whiskey dent in there. The guy can hammer out easy enough. This would be an easy, easy fix. And then that patch is an easy one too. And we'll, I'll walk you through all that stuff when we, when we get to this truck. Um, what about stuff like this? Is this pretty typical? The guy cutting out the rad support? Yeah, back in the day, I don't know why they did it, but uh, a lot of cars and trucks, if you see them out in the field with the engine missing, they typically cut the rad to pull the engine out. So I'm not sure. Maybe they didn't have the proper engine hoist or... Give you a little extra room, I guess, to get it out. And if you didn't care about what you were taking out of, I guess it didn't matter. Yeah. But we, we end up paying the price for it. Yeah, so... But, uh, you know, that could be fixed later, or maybe you, if your engine doesn't fit, you might want that cut out anyways. That's true. All right. Uh, these, these park lamps, turn signals, they're readily available aftermarket, not a big deal. Um, same as bumper grills. I wouldn't let that be a deciding factor, would you? No, I, I think because you could get them aftermarket, but where they mount you want to make sure it's not completely rotted yeah out. but if it is we wouldn't that wouldn't really make a no. deciding factor either no. uh you know that's easy enough to fix especially if it's going to be hidden behind the light uh this side needs patches as well so it's a bit of work if you're if you're paying someone to do the work maybe maybe it, it yeah it, it, Maybe you might want to look at buying replacement fenders, do a little research on them and see what fits and how well they fit and that kind of stuff. Uh, you're talking to a couple guys who don't buy replacement fenders. Well, you actually bought a replacement fender. Actually, I did too for my 66. Yeah. How, did, mean, how do yours fit? They don't fit that great. And I, I actually waited to find original fenders to uh, replace them. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I put a uh, replacement fender on mine and I was not happy with it. And you still you, you spend some money on that um i think we did we do the interior oh, i think we just touched on it on the heater so what about in here what kind of things are we looking for well again like the inside of the door and uh you know the step and i guess our like floors that. are rust on the floor yeah and then uh you know if you're out in the field trying to buy it maybe you want to move some of the stuff out of the way and you know, pull the floor mats up and see what you got, right? Yeah, take a look. Because on this one, as you can see, it's got rust in the corner. Yep. And you're gonna have to get some patch panels for that. Yeah. I mean, there's some good stuff in here too, like this. That that rubber mat looks pretty good, eh? <laughs> I think I'd, I'm gonna try and save that because the rest of it's real good. That's the worst of it. And I'll, I'll probably end up putting a mat over that anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you could you could get a replacement rubber mat. They do sell them, yeah, they do. Um, one thing we did notice is this one is probably a V8 because it doesn't have the hole removed for the for this floor starter. Yeah, look at that plug in there. Isn't and, that something? Yeah, and uh, typically the six cylinders had the floor had the floor starter. Right. Hmm. So and then. I've never seen that before. What's that? It's all the way to the floor. Well, because there's no transmission, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I think another thing, if you're looking at buying an old one, pop open the glove box. Like this one's got no, that's not going to tell us anything, but a lot of times they will. Take a look in here. You'll find old registration, old you might, insurance. You might find the keys. You might find the keys. There's all sorts of good stuff a lot of times hiding in these things. This one, unfortunately, doesn't have anything for us. It does have, I see, it's got... Oh, it's uh, got the vent window. It's got the vent window and it's got the piece for the visor too. Well, oh, maybe that's not for that visor no. though. 
But regardless, there are some pieces in there that may come in handy. Another lag bolt. So there you have it. Yeah. So what do you think, Jeff? We cover it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, should we go do the other truck? Yeah. Wanna take a fiver? Sure. Another one of Jeff's trucks. This is what is this? A 58? Did you say, Jeff? Yeah, a 58 GMC. All right, it's half he's, ton. You see the the front end is quite a bit different. Um, uh, can't really see it on here, but maybe if you can tell us about it, I'll I'll put up a picture of one on the video. Yeah, the so the emblem for the half ton GMC is 9310. 9310 is a half ton. Yeah. Okay. yeah. In Canada. Yeah, and. Uh, Typically, they have a different bumper than the Chev. They got the, the bumperettes on here and a different grill. And actually, uh, Chev uses the same uh, fenders and they just bolt their grill on a little different because the grill is a different shape. So. Oh, same fenders, different grill. Yeah. The more you know, Chev Barber. That's, that's good to know. So, GMC is kind of like a fancier version of the Chevy, is that right? Well, the, they they might have been but they were more of a workhorse too right oh, like right? people bought more of them for work or they had fleet option trucks too as well so mm -hmm. this one's a good you know because it's a 58 it's different than the 56 and one of the differences is the frame is actually two inches longer on this half ton than a 56. And where does that longer take place? Is it in the front, the back, or the yeah, overall? Yeah, it's in the front for the front fenders. Oh, I see. And the, I think it actually, the bumper actually bolts up a little different as well. So, so I, some guys, they want to switch to, to the older single light headlights. And it, you know, if you do that, you got to change a lot of parts. And then sometimes the frame will be sticking out and you have to adjust that. So, so here we see that that same rust that we see on the on the 56 and even up here while this one's not as bad we see the same rust as we've seen on the 56 on the top of the fender and then up front around the headlights there's some rust there's some rust this one's actually not as bad believe it or not but but it is still bad we got a big whammo here kind of stuff you got to watch out for but again uh, with the cost of fenders, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, the patches aren't terrible. Uh, but if you're not a do-it-yourselfer, and you're going to pay somebody to replace this, that can get kind of pricey. Yeah, and these fenders, the dual headlight fenders, they, they weren't as popular. People, are, you know, didn't really want them. So sometimes you can find a, an original fender easier than the single headlight fenders. So. so a GMC over the Chevy? Well, no, but even a Chevy dual headlight fender. Oh, there you go. It's Good to be easier to find in better shape. So. Okay, so on this one you can see the back of the cab, much like the other one. This one's a little worse, but really it's in the same in the same family. And then, so with this one, this like it's bent up underneath. You want to watch out for that. Yeah. That you know. I mean, drove over a log or something or or you know someone picked it up with a forklift or whatever sure. yeah and then you're gonna have piles of dirt you want to dig through sometimes to see what you got left i mean the, the step is there but probably you know something you might want to replace and this one and the cab is rotten on the passenger side here yeah so you can see if jeff was saying before about just pulling back these uh, the rubber mat and take a look and yeah, there you go. That's what we got um, Good look in the glove box, but it doesn't have it. This is this is actually one of Jeff's uh, parts trucks so We look up top you can you can see there's the rust he was talking about before across the top there Over the windshields pretty good on this. We were just having a debate about that hole up there whether it's factory or if somebody did that i don't Looks know like a factory cut to me yeah so if you know let us know in the comments too uh and over here you can see the same thing we got lots of rust and all across there it's a rough cab from that point of view for sure yeah and uh so unfortunately when i bought this someone had taken a lot of it apart and actually some of the door bolts were loose 
and the fender bolts were loose so somebody was trying to take it apart and didn't really get that far and you know it might have been more damage having a loose door and stuff you can see down here the, the outer skin has rusted away this is uh all gapped in here now um, definitely repairable but just something to look out for i guess i imagine these things sit for years out in a field rain snow whatever gets in between these tracks and yeah, it, fills up the yeah it settles to the bottom it's got nowhere to go it rusts out and, and disappears that way wow this box is in pretty good shape eh well that fender is holy smokes okay so this fender is actually in in pretty good shape to be honest yeah. so if you're looking at it like this one was pretty well empty when i bought it Typically, people put stuff in it, they got dinged up. Like, you can see all the dings in it. Yeah, then it gets pushed forward. Yeah, and like the back of the cab is dinged. And... I don't know if you can see that on, on camera, but you got a bit of a whammo there. That's going to happen from hauling loads, hitting the brakes. But I mean, if you're looking at a cab, you know, dents are better than rust. So. Absolutely, dents are better than rust. I agree with that. So, like, like, like even with these fenders, like, this one is actually a lot better on rust wise. Right. I but notice immediately this one is missing the rust up front that mine has. It's got a dent back here. Yeah. But that's, I would take this fender over my and fender. A dent up here. And it's got a whammo up here too. Somebody climbing on top or we're kneeling. Talking about the, the box rails, how they're going to get dinged up. Yep. We got a dinger here. But again, like these wouldn't be a make it or break it. They're just. Help you negotiate, baby. Yeah, and maybe another thing to mention is sometimes you'll find someone cut a box down, right? And one of the easiest ways to tell where the pockets are for the stick, the stake pockets. That's because right. we we ran into a guy that didn't realize he had a cut down box, but it had the center stake pocket. So on a long box, it'll have three stake pockets. Now a short box, you got one, two. Yeah. So if you see that center stake pocket. You got a cut down box. Not that it's the end of the world, but you also might have a cut down truck. Again, that's not the end of the world either if it's done properly. Um, tailgate? I don't know. Pretty decent. Yeah, I'd say so. You got a bit of a dinger there, not a big deal. But it's got the it's got the same repair as the other tailgate. That's right. That's I don't know, it's pretty typical for the age of the truck, eh? Yeah. This one's got the tail lights but they're smashed over and but the brackets are there. The brackets are there, which is kind of a big deal. And this fender is not quite as good. It's smacked in here, it's smacked in there, but more importantly, it's got that cutaway. I don't, I don't really care for it. Yeah. Uh, I know some guys actually are looking for that fender and looking for this bracket. And I don't know if you like that look. Yeah. They're out there. Um, this one is starting to rust, I noticed in the corner but you know it could be just surface rust and you take it apart and clean it up but. right so oh same problem with this side is someone took it apart and uh well if you come this way okay I'll open it up. yeah so, i see that bottom hinge is yeah. even bolted on right yeah so somebody was you know tried to take it apart and i never put the bolts back and, yeah, it's kind of been stripped out already. Yeah, a lot of pieces are missing. Yeah, so this is kind of what we we're talking about, getting a complete one versus getting one that's like in this condition. I'm not a fan of trying to rebuild something from this this condition. Can it be done? Of course it can be done, but it, it sure sucks trying to find. Yeah, if you're trying to track down parts or even, you know, part like door to door, sometimes the part doesn't fit as good as the original one, right? right. Because a lot of the adjustments were made on the factory line, right? Yeah, a lot of the hardware is difficult to find, track down. Like even things as simple as like these screws for the for the door panels, some, you know, hardware for, for the dash, the bezels, you know, all that stuff. It's nice to have a complete truck and I'm not afraid to pay a little more for a complete truck. Well, this is a hell of a good parts truck yeah and actually by today's standards a lot of guys are building from less yeah like so i bought this about 15 years ago and i think that uh 
to me it was a parts truck but now with how trucks how you're finding trucks now it, it actually could be a builder truck i agree yep so um and here's something interesting that we found on this truck so a lot of people say this isn't a factory thing but it might have been a dealer option and looking at the rust this truck this mirror has been on here quite a long now, time now why would somebody want a mirror like that so i did some digging and these mirrors were put on so guys could see past their spare tire oh, spare tire here in this mirror you're not seeing past it very well to the car behind you that makes sense so so there's always a big debate if these are aftermarket they may have been like a dealer option or maybe a warranty thing where guys complained they went back to the dealership and that's how they fixed the problem so this may be like a dealer installed piece or what have you you know era correct uh, etc not the chinese made ones you find on summit or yeah or like, wish or like, alibaba like chinese ones they've copied it but that's an original type mm -hmm. of mirror so. and that's that's metal there that's not plastic so, so this fender kind of same same thing as the other side typical uh typical here and same as up around the the, light, the headlights i assume yeah, uh, so we got some there, and some rust in there. I really wish you guys could see this front bumper. It's got great patina. Front bumper, grill, these these bullets here, the whole thing looks great. Um, actually played a big part. Uh, Jeff's other truck played a big part in why I bought mine, my 56. I actually thought it was a 55. But gonna do. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, and another thing, like when I got this truck, the hood's missing, so that you know might be difficult to track down as well, right? That's right. Um, Did, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't stop you from buying a truck if it was missing a hood, yeah. because the main thing, uh, the main takeaway I think that we have is the cab is the most important on these things, and uh, so the, the serial number on this one is in the same spot. Oh yeah, and you can see it starts with an 8. So this one is a 58. So this one is a 1958 GMC. Yeah. And we noticed that on this tag, the trim the trim level or trim paint coat is not on this tag. Oh yeah, there's no trim or paint coat on this one like the other one. Yeah. So what they did was they put the, the trim tag on the firewall. So, oh, look at that. So if you're if you wanted to make it original or restoring it you want to make sure you get the trim tags or make sure they're on there yeah so first place to look is on that vin and if you don't see it there come look under the hood here uh i think i've seen it before on the kick panel too yeah down yeah. on the lower side yeah I, side. I, i've seen that too all right where do you think that damage is from well that's yeah that's another thing that you know i looked at when I bought this truck, of not restoring it, is I don't. I think there's a bit of damage there from something. That's some strange damage right there. Hmm. But anyway, I think that's gonna close this one out. You got anything else to add? Well, uh, just that this one, I know for sure was a six-cylinder truck, and by looking up the serial number, so. Uh, a lot of places you can find the breakdown the serial number for you. It'll tell you if it's a half ton, three quarter ton, if it came with an inline six or a V8. So that's something else you should look for as well. And it'll, it'll tell you if it was a short box or a long box too. Yeah, decode those bins. It's uh, it's important. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this one. Me and my buddy Jeff. Uh, there's your buyer's guide, what to look for, what to look out for. And if you decide to buy one, let us know in the comments. If you got one already, let us know. Yeah, if you got some parts, let us know. Yeah, if we left something out, let us know. <laughs> if you got some parts, let us know. All right, that'll do it for this one. If you stuck around this long, think about subscribing. Thanks a lot. We'll catch you on the next one. Say bye, Jeff. Hey, bye.